Hi and good morning. Um, I uh, want to create a short list of videos about YubiKey because I use YubiKey um, since a long time and I had constantly friends of mine asking me why I choose YubiKey and how I use my key for my everyday security. So I've decided to create a short list of video to explain how I use the YubiKey and how it can be used to um, have a better security and to use effectively for your everyday usage. And first of all, as I suggest to everyone, when you buy your first YubiKey or your first YubiKey pair, because it is always better to have a couple of key in case one it's lost and you want to have a backup key. And the first thing I suggest you is going to Yubico website and download the YubiKey Manager. And it's a software that can be used in Windows, it can be used in Linux and in every operating system. And it's the base software that you can use to configure your key. It's just a download and install application and it is very, very easy to use. Once you install the Yubico, YubiKey Manager, you just launch the program, insert your YubiKey, and the software is able to find your YubiKey version of firmware and the serial number. It's important to notice that you cannot update firmware. In its, it, it, this is a feature of YubiKey. Firmware is fixed because uh, allowing upgrading of firmware can um, reduce security of the key. So this is your firmware. If you find you have some functioning, some, some feature that are not present in your YubiKey and you have an old firmware, you need to buy a new key. But the latest key have a version of firmware that is um, that has a lot of feature and are perf it is perfectly um, okay for everyday use. Then you have a menu in which you can, last menu is the interfaces. And uh, this is an NFC uh, YubiKey, so it has the ability to enable or disable various functionalities of the key, both for the USB interface and for the NFC interface. And I usually keep everything active. I don't have any problem, but maybe if you want to avoid the risk of someone going with an, F an NFC scanner uh, near your pocket and being able to grab something, I think it's a very unlikely scenario. You can disable some functionalities of the key depending on the interface USB or NFC. But the nice part is the application tab in which you can configure the three main parts of YubiKey. So the one-time password, choose lot. I'm not going to show you how to use this part. I will do in a future video. Then you have the Fido2 configuration and here is where you should always, as soon as you buy your key, you should change the pin. So you should change pin in a, with a pin that you can uh, remember for higher um, key security. And remember, when a pin is set, you have eight retries before your pin is disabled and you need to reset your um, your card and every um, authentication you registered with the Fido2 interface will need to be re-registered. So please choose a pin you can remember. And this is a security feature because if you lost your key and some attacker gain uh, access to your physical key, it can use max a maximum number of eight retries before the key stop working with that credential. So it cannot be brute forced. The last part is the PIV, the personal identity verification uh, part of the key. And in this uh, area, you can see that you have a pin management and certificates because this is the part where you can load certificate inside your key. But in the pin management, you can press configure pin and uh, this is an operation that Yubico can suggest as soon as you buy the key you need to change the pin. And if you press change pin, you have the option to set the current pin and the new pin. And if you uh, just both the key, the pin is set to a predefined value. And here in the right, you have the use default button. If you check the use default, you can have the current pin, the default pin auto entered for you. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's, it's absolutely not secure. So you need to change the pin and you need to confirm the new pin. 
and then you can change the pin. Okay, now after you change the pin for the personal identifier verification, you have only three retries before the pin is blocked. So you have a PUC, it's the pin unlock key, and you can check the current PUC is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, if you um, just uh, both the key, and you can choose a new um, pin unblock key. So it's highly suggested for security of your key that you set a PUC and you save that PUC in a password manager. So in the event in which you forget the pin, enter three time incorrect pin, the pin is blocked, you can unblock with the PUC. So you, I, I strongly suggest using a password manager. Um, the PUC can be eighth character long, okay? So I simply take a password generator, I generate an eight character long uh, string and number password and I use a spook. Okay, it's very, very simple. Just paste the book and change book and the game is done. Finally, you have also a management key. A management key is uh, it's a key and if you use the fault, you can see that it's a very long number. It is a key used in some cryptographic operation. As, as for everything in um, cryptographic operation, it's strongly suggested that you change the current management key, the default management key into a new management key. So same thing as before, I generate a new management key with this button and it generate a number. Now you can look at the generate key, you copy and I strongly suggest you to save this number into a password manager because you can need this value for some operation. So you save it in a secure location and if you want, you um, protect with pin. So that's an option. So usually you can protect the key with pin. It means that the management key is stored on the YubiKey and every time you need to use um, this key for an operation, the key will ask you for the pin and the pin will be used to decrypt the key. If you want um, more security or, or, or if you don't want this key to be stored inside the YubiKey, you can uncheck protect with pin, but then you need to keep this value on a password manager. So every time some operation can ask you, uh, uh, this operation are the only op are operation when you use the personal identify verification part and you need to have this into a password manager. But if you want, you can protect with pin, it's an option. But the suggestion is you should change the default value to something unique and save it somewhere. And after this, you configure your key and you start using without any problem. And all these steps are absolutely optional. The pin for the FIDO2 part, it's usually asked by um, operating system the first time you configure the key. So you were suggested to create a pin even if you don't use the YubiKey manager. But that's a good rule of thumb. It is better as soon as you have your YubiKey for the first time in your hand, just set up a pin, book, management key, first time saving everything into a password manager and you are ready to go. And for pin and book requirement, you can check the documentation from Yubico. And for the personal identity verification part, you have a pin, a book, and management key. The pin is at least six characters and can contain any characters. And uh, there are command that for cross-platform portability is recommended to use only decimal digit. And it's absolutely enough. Eight decimal uh, digit for only a three time attempts before the, before the pin is blocked, it's, it's usually enough for enough security. And um, it's, uh, there's a limit of eight bytes, so you can use eight ASCII characters, okay? So it's, uh, it's okay. Uh, there's an option in the YubiKey PIV manager to enforce pin expiration. It is not um, enforced, so you can leave the same pin uh, without absolutely any, any problem. And um, okay. And you can use also setting in the PIV manager which enforce password complexity rules on your pin, but as I told you before, since for cross-platform portability is recommend to use only decimal digits, it's usually uh, not useful. And I, 
I remember if you have only three attempts for the pin, so it, it decimal digits are only strong enough because someone must steal your key, must obtain your key, and it cannot brute force it with only three attempts. For PUC, the considerations are similar. Requirement and restriction are the same for the pin, but there is um, a rule. If you use your pin for management key, is the latest option we see in the previous part, in the previous section, you cannot use the PUC. The PUC is disabled for technical reason, and that's because the pin is used to derive a key for protecting the, the management key. So if you forgot the pin and the pin is blocked, your management key is lost and you need to reset uh, all the personal identify verific identity verification part of the key. The reason for this is when you use your pin to protect the management key and the management key is stored inside your YubiKey, the concept is this, management key is still used, but it's cryptographically derived from your pin. And one implication of this is the management key changes whenever you change your pin, and it's therefore crucial that you only change your pin using the YubiKey manager, okay? And that's the reason why uh, probably you can leave your management key outside of your YubiKey and keep safe in a password manager. So it is perfectly fine. But remember, if you want to store the management key inside your YubiKey and you want to protect with the pin, that's a limitation. For the FIDO2 part, pin requirement uh, requirements are really, really different. And it can be up to 63 alphanumeric characters, letter and numbers. And that's uh, the reason why you usually have eight different tentative before the pin is blocked, because usually it can be set to a really higher and more secure string, not only eight characters, but especially not only limited to um, digit. And so it is much more secure, and that's because your FIDO2 uh, pin is protecting your, uh, ident your identity. You can use, if you have the key and you have the pin, you can log in into a FIDO2 protected account with only the key and the pin. So it has much more stronger requirement, and that's the reason why you have eight tentative before the pin is blocked. 